back again. This time we're not speaking Sw- Swedish. We're switching over to English because Carlo... In not ready yet. <laughs> oh. English is your preferred language. I got Carlo and Max here. You guys just came straight off the stage. And I think you guys talked about EDR. What, yeah. what were the things you guys talked about? We talked about some, uh, some ways to get around a lot of the modern... EDRs that that are around. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Were you able to publicly disclose the ones that you bypassed? Yeah. Or is that... We disclosed some of them. Yeah. We didn't disclose all of them. (laughs) (laughs) We did give some information on. And it was a part of some kind of pen test that you guys are looking into. Yeah, The detectability. Yeah, we were were specifically testing what would work and what not. Okay. Mm. This security product. Exactly. Pretty sweet. I'm, I'm excited about that. And... But before... Before we get into the questions and all the technical stuff, and everybody's just going to send in those amazing uh, questions to Bjorn, we're going to have a little bit of a competition to warm things up. Nice. And, and that's the reason because the, the chat will have a chance to win a secret TrueSex swag pack containing awesome stuff that we will ship out. But to be able to participate in, in that, you need to pick your winner. So in the chat, it's going to be M for Max or C for Carlo. And um, you guys get the possibility to choose your weapon of choice. It's either being the best one in the labyrinth, or it's tic-tac-toe, or it's a showdown three versus three in shuffleboard. What do you guys want to do? Mark for the shuffleboard. Shuffleboard it is! (laughs) Awesome! All right. So, hang on. This is what we do. So I... Since we got the amazing chat in the audience with us here, I want you guys to crouch down a little bit and just be very focused here so we can get a nice shot of you and the people back home can just join in on the fun. <laughs> so, uh, stay in socks, pause on who starts. Mm. So, one, two, three. Yep, that's oh. the scissor beats the, the plastic. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> you begin. Okay, so I can say is Fabio is currently in the lead with four. So, you need to beat four. Good start. A bit weak, though. <laughs> <laughs> Good start. <laughs> no. Here we go. Oh, even... <laughs> even very worse. I can, I guess it shows that you works in IT. You need to do more push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or, or maybe it's push up. Okay, zero points for <laughs> Carlo. That's all good. Yes. Max, you're up. Yes, yes. Don't even fit behind here. It's <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're a tall dude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We go. Oh, it can. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, so yeah, close. Yeah. Too close. Too close. No, that's also too hard. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> Luck. Okay, and I'm not gonna bump that one. Uh, then I'm gonna have a bad time. Awesome. Oh, my. Six points. He heads up in the lead with six points on the <laughs> shuffleboard game. Yeah. And oh. Gregor has, um, you can't choose two, can you? No, you can't. Well, Gregor is quickest. I think he, I think you won this one. Uh, <laughs> or what you can do is you can actually, uh, um, we, we, it needs to be gamification. You can, you can not be biased and choose that. So it's either, is it two people that had the same answer? No, Gregor, Gregor was fir- first and he actually choose, uh, chose both Max and uh, Carlos. Not possible. Not possible. <laughs> you, get, you can't have both. You need to have one. one. <laughs> That's kind of go. Okay, guys. Uh, um, how is it to actually bypass the EDR in real life? Not just like in your presentation. Like you guys, of course, did it, you see that's pretty easy? Yeah. Step by step? Uh, in real life though? Mm. Well, of course, if you have it on your uh, local environment, you can test it as much as you want. So you can, uh, it, you just are restricted by time. Yeah. So if you have more time, you can potentially install all this EDRs you wanna find bypasses for, and you can you can play around with it. So yeah. it's just a matter of how much time yeah. you have. And and the, the yeah, exactly. And a lot of the uh, the EDRs we tested, a lot of them had very basic kind of settings, mm-hmm. like the the standard. And if you're in a real environment, they often have you know this extra rule set, the Shara rules, alerts. everything else yeah, prepared, community exact. based. Exactly. So it's Again, it's possible, it makes it harder, but it's a matter of time, really. Yeah. To because, so I just understand this right. Like, you're running some kind of custom payload on a system and just 
hopes that it's going to detect it or bypass it. If you obfuscate it enough, and the system never seen that kind of heuristic behavior or that kind of thing, or you, if you write your own custom malware, like yeah. we do on Red Teams, so like we, we don't we can't rely on a third party yeah. because we don't want to get detected. <laughs> exactly. And uh, then you're probably going to bypass. So you need to look for the indications behind that. What yeah. other kind of movement happened within the system? Yeah. So. When you guys, uh, when you did this, what were your like major takeaways? Were they like epiphany moment? You're like, oh shit, <laughs> we got that to run. That was vanilla, or <laughs> or, or or were they like a strong obfuscation involved? Yes. Uh, well, there was no strong obf obfuscation involved. We, we, we were. We I don't want to hear that. We, though. <laughs> we started it's incredibly with, uh, complex. We started with. Uh, we don't want to really like write a, a zero day exploit or. Uh, super fancy duper malware exploit mm. um, so we started off by steps and mm. we see gradually what is uh, is, is working mm. and because yeah. uh, you don't really need to be spending 200 in, in, for example when you can spend a hundred okay uh, to find a, an effective solution Help me out here. So let's say I'm a sysadmin, right? I got my EDR solution. I'm working with the blue team. We are defending shit. <laughs> and we want to make sure that, you know, we got the rules up to date. What, what were, would be the key takeaways for somebody that needs to do that? How would they harden their kind of system, learn the system to identify the kind of things that you guys have been working with? Wanna go or go? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, first of all, um, you need to know your environment. Mm -hmm. So sure. you need to know what programs are you running, what are the usual patterns in your environment. If uh, you know that uh, your setup is doing a certain way that logins need to happen here and there, you can uh, can expect it. Otherwise, yeah. you can just start to like put whitelist or security rules and detection rules like specific for every mm. single thing that does not match what you're using. So it's, it's kind of like a learning phase yes. where you need to identify what am I running, yes. why am I running it, yes. and then look for anomalies yes. that just mm. don't match that pattern. Yes. Um, Maybe you start a bit more restrictive, and then if you see something is a bit not working as it should, then you allow it, and then you... It's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Would you do that in production, no, no, though? No, of course, it was not to a certain <laughs> extent, but um, just putting some, some rules here and there yeah, it's yeah. Uh, just a starting point. You should like very be granular. Mm. And primarily, you know, this, we, the EDR system we see, and we talked about this earlier on the stream, is that a lot of those uh, enterprise environments that we see are primarily focused around Windows. It's Windows environments, and we also have those systems that run OS X systems and, and, and some Next systems as well, but not not on the higher scale when it comes to enterprise. Hmm. How is how can you see the maturity? How has that evolved within the EDRs on platforms that's not Windows? Is that something that was way easier to bypass or or, or sh more challenging? We saw that they are not really at the maturity stage. That you know, they're not in a stage where they can really be compared to their Windows counterparts. Well, the the bypasses we found for you know macOS specifically, as we mentioned, is was crude. hardly a bypass. We just did what we wanted to, and it wasn't caught. Mm -hmm. And we know that for Linux specifically, there are some that are you know stepping up their game, but then it differs a lot from say distro to distro. Yeah. So it's. It's expanding. I feel like they're making good progress at it, mm. but at this time, I still got a little bit of work to do. Mm. Feel. Pretty sweet. Bjorn, do we have anything uh, coming in in the chat? Yeah, of course we do. <laughs> uh, Community knows. Community yeah, ask questions. <laughs> um, we have a question here. Um, you're going to say, uh, what in your, your view, what are the best EDR solution vendors out there? Uh, hashtag not sponsored, so. Uh. So it's okay. Or <laughs> <laughs> that one is. Uh, well, I don't really know to, how, to which extent can we answer that. <laughs> uh, well, you can all say what you think is good. What works? From the subset we did, I think Defender for Endpoint worked quite well. Yes. We could bypass it just as we could the other ones, but it still delivered um, you know, the, some decent level of defense, I think. Yes. I mean, <laughs> it's quite uh, um, 
native to Windows, so it has a pretty good uh, White native <laughs> spectrum <laughs> of... I wonder uh, who's going to inject it into the kernel. <laughs> Probably the people that built it. <laughs> yeah. I, I get the idea. But, but then again, of course, it's a slippery slope to answering yeah. that question because yeah. we, we are extremely unvendor biased in the yeah. things yeah. that we do and we follow what's best. Right now, probably, it seems like uh, EDR from Microsoft is currently a team player. But, and, I mean, there's a plethora. Don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like, yeah. could somebody run multiple different solutions? Would that be a recommendation or would they compete within the same machine? I don't think they should yeah, run multiple like on the same machine. Yeah, Fair. that time is... Fair, then we know. <laughs> you don't have four antivirus systems on your computer, <laughs> so you probably don't do that with your DRs yeah. as well. No. Do you have anything else, Björn, for us? Yeah, sure. Uh, we have this from Henrik. Uh, a lot of examples of hacks and intrusions l rely on hackers downloading payloads from the internet. Uh, can a proxy solution prevent this, or are there any better solutions that prevent this action? What do you guys think? Ah, so what you're saying is that if somebody has a system that's been infected and they want to download their payload, a yeah. proxy system so that would allow, like limiting egress traffic, right? Yeah. That, that was kind of like idea system that would see if you're allowed to visit an external URL. Yeah. Hmm. What do you guys think? That's a bit yeah. tricky to answer because how can you be sure that, I mean, you, have, you need a filtering process behind the proxies, right? So how can you know what's legit and what not in, in that case? Exactly. I mean, there are super common to host things like malicious code on things like the public uh, hosts, like Dropbox or things yeah. like that. And Secret they channels on Dropbox yeah. is very common, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's not like it's, you know, uncommon to host not very legit things on legit hosts. And then you're suddenly getting into the problem whether users are going to complain because, oh, none of my backups work, for example. Yeah. So it's, a, yeah, it's a tricky. And if you have a filter, let's say that you're regexing out a, a domain that you trust, <laughs> like you're whitelisting this domain, and yeah. then a subdomain ha uh, takeover happens, then you're in a totally different situation because yeah. that seems like natural allowed traffic. Exactly. And exactly. payload's going to get delivered. And most, to be honest, most communication channels are kind of sneaky anyway. <laughs> <laughs> They're not really obvious. Yeah. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, I don't think that would be a uh, yeah. Pu putting up more things in between uh, is going to be challenging. So you, you kind of just need to trust the det detection capabilities. And in this case, apparently that didn't work out too good. <laughs> so, what, which 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 part of this were your favorite one though? When 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 you had that excitement, when you're like, oh, th this was cool. I think I can start with the. Uh, we we had a bunch of issues with uh, dumping uh, memory, so the local security authority LSA yeah. process, because that is something that's you know should be ca caught by you know pretty much every EGR out there. Yeah. And one way we found around that was to just dump all of the memory on the host, and we found uh, some cool tools to do that that use assigned drivers to actually dump the memory, meaning uh, it's not caught at all. And in turn, we found that specifically Defender for Endpoint acted in, this, in a way that you get this really large file out because it's a raw memory dump, it's, it's massive. Yeah. And that file itself was not found in Defender for Endpoint. You couldn't find it at all. You couldn't find it in the device inventory, or not in inventory, but the like file list of the device or in the timeline yeah. or anything. So it's just invisible. And we can exfiltrate that. I don't think we brought that up on the presentation, but, no, but it was possible for us to exfiltrate that file over, say, SMB yeah. without that being detected as well. So it was an essentially invisible exfiltration of an invisible file, which was, to me, I mean, very, very, very interesting very to find. Interesting. <laughs> and that's also like a topic when the malware comes in, a lot of times they, by purpose, make it uh, in bigger in size or bigger in like the amount of uh, CPU that they require yeah. so that the EDR says after a while. No, this takes too much resources right now. Maybe I'm going to analyze it later. Oh, so he skips it. Yeah, it's mm. pretty beautiful. So a couple <laughs> of loops in between there. Yeah. So the fur, <laughs> yeah. the yeah. the exit. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And since you were able to exfiltrate, exfiltrate that, that mm. memory dump, it's probably a couple of gigabytes, yeah. right? Yeah, or at and least. And you had that data coming out. Um, you were free to do whatever you wanted with that, right? I, you can brute force, you can use, you know, ex exfiltrate one, whatever tool you want on that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, without the risk of any kind of detection because you, you're doing it locally on your host. Yeah. Would that be possible to be done a, on a server or, or just clients or, I mean, what kind of scenario? I'm just curious here because if you can dump 
I th the memory of a server. I think that we did it uh, in a normal. We Windows did it on server. a client. We had we ran the memory uh, analysis with uh, volatility. Yep. And it had, if I remember correctly, I might be wrong here. It didn't really have any profiles for the Windows Server versions we were using. So okay. For the proof of concept, we used a a client. Yep. But I really see no reason but that that was just for like parsing the like analyzing the forensic, right? Not just for the dumping. The dumping can be done also on the server. Yeah, of course, the dumping yeah. itself can be done on the server, but the analysis process there specifically was on a, from a client. But yeah, again, I see no It's a matter of finding the right tool there. Yeah, 100%, 100%. 100%. So, so cool. Björn, final thoughts. Any more questions? Uh, no more questions right now. Uh, I think this has been an excellent uh, session. Very interesting to see how you compare different kind of uh, sessions and, and techniques. So. And I'm happy that you hack things. <laughs> I mean, is it hacking things and make sure, and th because this is kind of also gives us that feeling that you, you, we blindly trust things. Mm. It, it's like you're blindly trusting a seatbelt that it works, right? But you never really try to hit your car and see if you survive. So this is one of those things that you can actually see: does it work or doesn't? It, it doesn't it, or mm. what kind of m measurements do we need to do to, or preventions to make sure that it's up to code, that yeah. it's updated Yara, Yara rules, and you're just making sure that you know your own environment. So, super cool. I'm very happy that you guys had a few minutes to swing by and just hang out. Uh, if there's any more questions that's going to be uh, put in the chat, please get those away uh, because we got Carlo and Matt, uh, Max here for a few more minutes and they can answer those directly. Because now we're heading for a break. Thank you.